What is up guys, Neil here, back with an Android, not so quick tip, but more of an actual feature review. So for me, I like the standard Android notification drawer. This is the stock one on my OnePlus 3T, but sometimes I don't necessarily always want to swipe down or sometimes the notification is too far away from my finger or it gets cut off because I'm listening to media, so it's only showing a summary. So I was thinking about a way to show my notifications on my home screen as you see here. So as you can see, for example, the first notification is for Twitter, the second one, the second one is for Regal Cinemas, the third one is a Google Plus notification, and I have the same layout here. So I figured I wanted to be able to do this so I could just swipe over, see that information, open the app, and it'll clear the notification once I open it. And that's where Custom Live Wallpaper Maker comes into play. So it's a relatively quick um, process. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up Custom Live Wallpaper Maker, and you're going to, um, for simplicity or and for ease of cleanliness in case you need to add stuff later, is you're going to create a stack group as you see here. I've called mine notifications. And then you're going to create um, another one if, if you're only, if you're going to do multiple, if you're just going to do one um, notification, then you don't need to do the second stack group, but you're going to do the first one that you do, that one I call notifications is going to be a vertical stack group, as you see here. And then the second, the ones you do after that, in case you're going to do more than one, in my case, I'm doing um, 10 notifications. I, it says 11 because the first one starts at zero, but then you're going to create a horizontal stack group. Um, I did horizontal center. And from here, you're going to create two items. The first is going to show the app icon, so you have the app for reference. Because, for example, in the case of Google+, Plus, you're going to get a similar looking enough notification. And if there's two notifications that look similar and you're not sure what it belongs to, then you have that handy. Um, the second item is going to be the actual text of that um, notification, which is going to include the title and the short text. So for, well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a bitmap image, so the second one on the right. So I'll delete that just because that's extra, but you're going to um, do that. Then you're going to toggle the um, bitmap pick image icon to be a formula. So from here, when you select the calculator, you'll scroll down. And you're going to go to the section for notification icons right here on the right with the bell and NI. And you're going to see a number of different options. So you can see the number of cancelable notifications, persistent notifications, Facebook, Google, Gmail, WhatsApp, and that sort of stuff. And from here, you're going to want to select the icon of the first cancelable notification. There's also the large icon in case you're going to only have a few or there's specific apps that you want to include. But for me, because it's, it's, it's I'm trying to fit as many as I can on my screen, I just picked the uh, first one, the icon of the first cancelable notification. So you'll see the formula like this at the top, um, where it says NI0 icon. So the first uh, cancelable notification is number zero. It's going to load that particular icon. So now that you have that, you don't necessarily know what the notification is aside from you have a notification from that app. So from here, you're going to create a text box. And here I have two text line items and you're going to go back down to notification, um, the notification information and you're going to select title of the first cancelable notification and short text of the first cancelable notification. That way, not only do you get the app that the um, notification belongs to, you'll get the summary of what it is exactly like what you see in your notification drawer. So once you have that set up, you're all set, you're all good to go. But for me, um, sometimes the text is going to overflow to overflow my screen and my um, um, carry over to the next line. And I want to have fixed a fixed number of lines in this case too. So a little bit of a medium um, step that you can take is you can do a text converter and uh, limit the number of characters that you see. So for example, my screen fits around 50 to 55 characters. So I'll do, I just went a text converter and um, I'm using the um, item here that says uh, will print only first four characters. And from here, when you do that, you'll be able to um, select how many characters you want to 
see on your screen. So for example, my screen, I, a good number is um, 50. So I just did text convert cut and it's gonna load the title of the notification and the text and limit it to 50 characters. In general, the title is not going to include more than maybe 10 or 15 characters, probably depending on the um, size of your app. But just in case, and to, for consistency, I set that at 50. And then for the text, same thing, I just have a cutoff at 50. That way, no matter how much information is there, whether it's more or less than 50 characters, it'll only show that amount and all notifications are consistent. Um, so from here, that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, you can then set the size of your um, notification. You can load in custom fonts if you want. Um, the other thing that I did was I also set a uh, touch... Um, Item. So let's say you want to load that app from your home screen and you don't necessarily know which app is going to be in that um, spot every single time. It's going to change. So it could be Twitter this time, Gmail next time, uh, Facebook, um, in my case, Regal Cinemas, Google Plus, YouTube. So what you're going to do is you're going to set a touch action. So anytime you touch it, you're going to have it set to um, launch an app. Or actually, that is not right i'm gonna have it set to uh custom action and from here we're gonna do open notification this is this is the um first item i'm going to um oops i'm sorry i am gonna go back a little bit because i was in the wrong spot um so i was actually in the text box and i don't actually want to be there so when you're in the um, stack group for that particular notification, in case that's how you're doing it, you're gonna open that stack group, you're gonna go over to touch, and you're gonna select the custom action, or you're gonna select the action, custom action under actions, and then you're gonna do open notification. And from here, you're gonna select the index number. So in case, if it's the first notification, you're gonna set it at zero. If it's the second one, it's gonna be number one, and so on and so forth for all of your different stack groups. And from here, once you do that, so I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to save my changes. Um, and actually, I think I had extra information here, so I'm going to delete that. But um, from here, so now let's say I want to open the um, first notification. I'm going to touch the icon. It's going to clear the notification, and it's going to open up Twitter because that's what the um, app loaded, and it's going to show the highlights. So there you go, and it's all um, set. So from here, um, that's basically all you need to do. Um, I mentioned the thing about dismissing the notification, so that's the second line item. So not, so more often than not, when you open a notification, it's going to clear it as well. But it does not always necessarily happen. So um, I think Twitter may or may not have been one of them. I know Woot, for example, is this, is like that where I click on it and it doesn't clear it. So what you can do in that situation is you could you'll do a custom action again. And then you're going to do dismiss notification and set it to the number of that stack group or notification you're looking at. So for the first one is going to be zero and you're going to go down your list depending on how many notifications you have. That way, anytime you select that notification, it not only will it open it, but it will also clear it. So that way, for example, um, in this case, I want to open up um, this Kindle notification. So it'll open it and then it will also uh, clear it. That way you, you know that you read it and doesn't stick or, or perpetually stuck around for you to um, look at and think, question yourself as to whether or not you opened it. So that's really all there is for that. Um, that's kind of a solution that I've been thinking about for a while. Just how do I get those notifications um, on my home screen? How do I... Um, how do I um, do that to begin with and can I even open the apps which it took a little bit longer to figure out but I did some googling and uh, watched some videos and I was able to get that squared away so that's just uh, means for me and I got as you can see I got 11, the first 11 notifications you might not necessarily have that many but even if you want to see let's say the top five notifications it's just a matter of setting up the first one and then copying and pasting your way down and changing the number um, to increase it and remembering to change the icon and the text as well so that way it all remains consistent. And then of course once the um, 
notification is cleared, you'll see that it goes away as well. So when I'm on my home screen, you see that I only have the first six notifications and the rest are gone. So once you open it, it goes away and they all move up or um, up and down accordingly, depending on the number of notification of where it's at. So that's all there is for that. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01.com. You can find me on um or sorry, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com, uh, where you can find social media links, subscription links, all of that good stuff. And then, of course, if you want to find this review and all reviews, you can find them on YouTube at YouTube.com slash PatelN01. And, of course, if you want to help support the show and help get content early and all of that good stuff, then be sure to visit the Patreon at Patreon.com slash PatelN01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.